Uh, what's new? Newness is not something that I feel any longer because every day is so new. But it, I thank you for reminding me that every day is new. But I take it for granted sometimes. So thank you very much. What are you busy with these days? I'm busy with you and I'm busy with uh, very many things in the, the cosmos. There are things happening. Things must be directed, must be understood properly so that we as ascended masters and people that are in spirit must give our all to it. Must send our energies to things that maybe we might not usually send to. I started um, uh, listening to Bhagavad Gita. Ah. And um, I like it. I like it a lot. Of course you do. <laughs> um, I didn't realize Krishna was that big. I was assuming Krishna is more like Jesus, but in, the, in Gita, it's more like uh, the creator. Yes. He is God. Uh huh. And he is one aspect, one personality, and one way to look at God. Uh -huh. um, he, is, he comes in a personality that these people can relate to, and then Jesus comes in another relatable personality, and Buddha, etc. Uh-huh. So, um, I um, uh, watched a, a movie called um, The Death of Stalin, and that was an airplane. It was very re relatable to me, very close, because of so many ties to Russia and so many ties to... Um, totalitarian ideas. Yes. Um, and that kind of poisoned me in a bit, I, I, in a little bit. I, uh, I'm still like, it's like two days later, I'm still very much affected. It's, it's uh, sed seductive, the idea of control, total control is seductive. It corrupts absolutely, but once you've experienced it for a long period of time, it becomes humbling because you realize that absolute power is not absolute power because you cannot know everything and not control everything. And it, so, it actually humbles you to some point after, you, after some failures. You believe that you are absolutely powerful and then you have a failure and realize that it is not true and it humbles you. Of course. No, that was like so wicked, so much wicked, wicked drama there. But this drama is like very sexy. I, I mean, I feel attracted to the sexiness of this drama. It's just so rich, so rich. And I have to, pure, I mean, it's dirty in, in every way. So uh, it's like being, uh, it's, it's more worse than porn, worse than porn. Yes. <laughs> I understand your attraction to it because uh -huh. it was a kind of power that was consuming. Uh -huh. But look at his wives. Right. He divorced the first one and the second one committed suicide. Right. Why would you think that she did that? Because he was so consumed with power and with uh, the negativity of the whole thing. He got his kicks from murdering people. Right. So that was not, it, it is all consuming with him, but yet he realized at some point that he was not succeeding in the way that he wanted to. Of course, you know, he, he knew that, he knew it at any time. Yes. At any time he was, uh, he knew that he is a fake. Of course, yes, a fraud, yes. Yeah. And so did um, Roosevelt. Roosevelt spent much time with him. Oh. And, what? I just I didn't, didn't uh, yes, great connection, yes. They, uh, Roosevelt 
was very close to him and uh, actually was closer to him than he was to Churchill and in many situations sided with Stalin over Churchill. Did you know wow. that? No, I didn't. But yeah, I need to research that. Yes, look that up. And remember this, Stal uh, Roosevelt tried to persuade Stalin in as many ways as possible to side with him. He knew that Sol Stalin was a great power and he wanted to get his way through Stalin's approval. Uh-huh, wow. Yeah, I, I just recently discovered that um, that stage of humanity wasn't random, it was everywhere, it was global. Absolutely. So there was some vibration in the air. I, uh, so there is some astrological, I guess, uh, influence but there. It was, the, of course, my friend, but there was a great deal of negativity going on in the world at that time. <laughs> because that was the time there was a struggle for negativity to become po all powerful and it did not succeed. Wow. Interesting. Yeah, first, uh, I mean, Chizhevsky. I, I know a great deal about this time in history, but right. um, I am happy to share with you whatever you need to know. Yeah, you were there. Absolutely. You didn't mention anything in your books about that. It was not for me to draw attention to that negative world. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah, I first noticed, uh, I mean, there is Chizhevsky study about astrology of politics and very scientific one. And then, um, and then there was a study, recent study about 1968 uh, also a year when uh, things happen independently in parallel in many countries. Yes. Uh-huh. I am aware, yes. Uh-huh. So I wonder what's coming here astrologically. See, the world is changing, but, you know, one of the... It, it, is, it is another struggle for power at this time, but it is also a struggle for people to wake up to wake up from their negativity and from their apathy. There's too many apathetic people at this time. They don't care about anything but themselves. And it is a time when they need to be awakened. I am also disconnected from, from most of the politics. Not because, uh, not because it is uh, 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 um, I want to discuss it, but I think it's just unimportant. I think it's, it's all for show. The, the, the real real action is uh, hidden. This is correct. You are right. The real action is mostly hidden. They give, they give you what they want you to see. They want you to believe one thing when another thing is happening. Right. So you are correct about that. Absolutely. 